Right then. So the last video, we had Steph's caddy on the dyno and we're running it in. Now, the reason we didn't sort of do a full run in then, it, the full run, is because it's always good to put oil filter out, have a look at it and change the oil because there's going to be some little bits of crap in there that it, no matter how clean you are, you're going to get some rubbish in there. You want to obviously check that you've not got any ring, rings sort of scuffing so you see some like Teflon from the side of pistons or you start seeing, seeing some bearing material or any steel so or iron, whatever. So we've got it on ramp now. We're going to swap at the minute it's got just normal platinum oil and what we're going to put in is this rock oil carbon 1050 which we've had some good luck with this seems to last pretty well and if you get it a bit too hot it doesn't seem to care as much i will be swapping it for genuine filter so we'll get that in we'll go from there this is where i get covered in oil and it's all caught on camera i'm assuming i can let this go all via buzz gun paw drop that on the floor. I didn't smash it to bits Paul. I made sure my foot caught it. But this is where it goes everywhere. Oh, made a lump come out then I think Paul. No, it just glug in. But, we'll see. It's probably still warm. Oh dear. This tray is all nice and clean as well. But, still warm. Don't feel very bitty. Feels good. So we'll let this drain. We'll let this drain out. Make sure it ain't going all over us. And once this is gone, we'll get the new stuff in. And uh, hopefully then we'll go on a little road test. So the long awaited caddy road test. I do apologise to everybody that's been uh, waiting for this. It's took a lot longer than it should have done. And uh, though that many people moaning about it on the first video, I knew, uh, I knew deep down that people were going to be very upset when there was a second video that I didn't drive it on. So I do apologise. But anyway, we're out in it now. It's not been ticking over for very long, so it's not very warm yet. So we'll do some... Uh, Part throttle cruising about at first, but as you can see, it drives drives pretty well, which we knew it would do because it's been driving about with 230 240 horsepower engine for a fair while already. But the seven speed DSG, it's got one of our tunes on it, works really nice, and obviously, the engine spec, it's got absolutely everything on it so I know I've had a few people say on the video um, that I did the part two video I didn't really go into too much detail about the engine spec but maybe I should have done but basically this is a GTD 28 turbos the main thing it's got which this is cruising around it changing gear at 2000 rpm and uh, driving really nice it's not like you're missing anything when you when you're cruising about. Let the gearbox do the work. Obviously, we're a manual car. You could probably do we a bit more uh, low end at times, but definitely not undrivable anyway. So the full spec, 28 turbo on our manifold, three inch downpipe, three inch exhaust. It's got. The stage two solenoid injectors, CP3 pump, which that's the stage three pump that we've got. We've got the rail pressure sensor, new uh, rail pressure regulator, ported head, cams, valve springs. It's got the coat of pistons, machined as well for valve release and slightly lower compression. It's got um, ARP head bolts, ARP mains bolts, 
light and imbalanced crank, which this one's running the PDs, the PD setup. It's PD crank, so that's a bigger, heavier crank. H beam rods, all about everything's balanced as well. And then obviously the car spec, pretty, pretty run of the mill on the video, on the uh, first couple of videos. So dyno wise we've not yet had chance to get it on and do the full power runs so I think that's the next job really after we've had a little bit of a road test I think the exhaust a little bit noisy this big turbo does open things up quite a bit this one more than manageable when it had the 22 on but vans are always worse than cars anyway it's, uh, You've got a big boombox behind you, all the resonations and echoes go on in the back. People that are interested in sound will explain it better than I can. But yeah, it, uh, it does what it needs to do. So, cooling's always a big concern on these sort of builds that we do because that's what always causes problems. When people want to have 300, 350 horsepower, whatever this is going to do. We don't want to drive them hard when it's warm, like it's probably 20 degrees today. We've got a massive radiator, this one's really big. We've got the electric water pump on there. We've got one of the new 74 degree thermostats, which we've only just released those. And then we're using the hypercool coolant that we run, the radical hypercool mix with the reverse osmosis watch, which we did a video about that, we'll put that in as well. So most of what we've got here is pretty much proven on the city go because it's other than having a DSG gearbox it's the same so the only thing left to do with it now is drive it see what it can see what it can do I'm still in drive at the minute Picks its feet up. Obviously, you can't see, but there's no smoke out the back either. Really nice and clean. But in drive, and I have noticed when you're in sport, really, we want to change the uh, the RPM that it changes gear out a little bit more. We sort of got it set up nice when it just had the 22 and the standard head and stuff, but now it wants the. Uh, he wants to be about five and a bit in sport. Leave drive as it is, but we'll change, change sport. But sticky manual, got the nice paddles on the back of the steering wheel. It'll give him a, give him a little flick. So, three grand. turbo lag but nothing too crazy you can still just get your foot in it and off you go turbo sounds good gear changes quick it is on jobs list to put some new uh, discs and pads on this as well because we, we destroyed them last time we took it on track and they've never quite recovered It's really good. It's so easy to drive with DSG. The city go would be a lot faster if we had DSG. Yeah, really happy with that. to like 5400 RPM just 
loves it. And when it changes gear in sport, to like four and a half, 4,700 RPM, it's just way too low. You just need tons more. drive as well so as soon as you put your foot down second gear it's got so much pull at the top of the revs you're going to drag that paddle pretty quick to make sure you don't hit a limiter that's why for the road I definitely want to uh, sport to be the one that you drive and you don't want to keep it in limiter and forget it to change gear because we've obviously got rid of the auto upshift but I think one of the next things we need to do is get some uh, working launch control on this and uh, do some 0 to 60 time runs see what we can get out of it this is going to be blisteringly fast. So, I think next thing, I don't know if it's going to happen straight away, but we'll um, get the Aldex unplugged so that it's not four-wheel drive anymore and we'll get it pulled onto the dyno and uh, see, see what power it actually does now because it's, uh, it's going to be decent. And if we get any more, we'll get the launch control working. We'll get it on the road and we'll have another little drive, but see what power we can make and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So, finally got it on the dyno. We've been keeping an eye on the coolant pressure. That's not getting up more than probably a bar, something like that, so 14 and a half, 15 PSI, which is good. A little bit too much coolant in, need to get a bit out. Exhaust manifold pressure's going to a gate, well, going to the ECU, not the gauge. Um, but that, we'll take that out once we've done tuning week. We don't really need to leave it in permanently. So, happy way, and everything's going, there's no leaks. Had some weird behaviour when we put it on dyno this time that we didn't have before. And because this is running a Tiguan ECU, we've had some uh, fuel pump issues because this is running the Tiguan fuel pump as well, which we only recently put that in properly. Um, it's got like a pre-charge fuel pump map. It's a full PWM control where there's like the old uh, or the, the normal type pumps seem to just be, they're on or off. So very strange, but... That will cause us a bit of grief to start with, which it didn't before, which did not make any sense. But anyway, we sorted that. Didn't seem to do it on the road, but I think it's to do with the Aldex being unplugged and it not being able to calculate the fuel consumption, which then it doesn't know how far to go. But anyway, that's sorted. So, as you can see, this is the power it's done. 341 horsepower and just under 425 foot-pound of torque at so, what, 3,300 RPM, something like that. And as you can see, so it's going all the way off the edge of the graph, so I'll just 5600. So you're revving it just off just over five and a half grand. 
but you can see we're still making peak power all the way to the top. So in theory, that shows us that we've got decent airflow, decent injection going on, good mixture um, for the uh, air and the fuel, which is obviously happening in the combustion chamber. Um, I'll just look at what the air to fuel ratio is, which as you can see, it's a little bit richer than maybe it needs to be on spool. So we're going to work on that a little bit. It's like just, just under 14 to one. Um, uh, sorry, just above 14 to one. And then it leans out once it's making full boost, it's leaning out to what? 17, 17 to one, up to 18 nearly in places. So it's very, very lean. This probably won't be sort of kicking out any visible smoke until we're getting down to like just below the 14, 13 to one. So it's, yeah, it's running really good. EGTs are fairly low still. I think they're only about 800 degrees, something like that, which you've got to be careful because low EGTs means you've got a lot of temperature going on in your cylinder. So you want to make sure that your engine can tech it. So yeah, we're, um, we know we're near what this will max out at. It shows that the porting's good, the cams are working, the injectors are working. Everything's working nicely. So the only other thing left to do is turn it up some more, see what it can do, and then turn the launch control on. I'll get back out on the road, see what it can do. Three hours later. So James and Tom have been working away the last few hours. It's been a little bit of a pain. The uh, fuel pump pre-supply map that seems to only have caused a problem on this project. We've never had it on these. We've had it on BMWs before, but not on the Volkswagen Audi stuff. But that seemed to be causing some problems. Just randomly didn't want to let us have the fuel that we wanted to have. So we've ended up putting another gauge on there, which when we get in the car, you'll see. But one of them's coolant pressure. One of them's uh, fuel pressure, so pre, pre high pressure pump. So if that starts dropping off, we know that's why we having lit more problems because at the minute we've only done the full throttle stuff on the dyno we've also still got the uh, EMP going to the ECU so the next step after this is going to be going on the road and seeing if we can feel the difference because if you look over here I said we get a bit more power and we certainly have so 341 before and 425 foot pound of torque and now we're at sort of 480 490 foot pound of torque a little bit earlier not a lot earlier just a couple hundred rpm earlier and we've just got like 75 foot pound of torque more everywhere and it's still i can't believe it myself still making peak power at sort of 5500 rpm or thereabouts so i think this van probably we might end up revving it a little bit more see how it drives see what exhaust temps are like on the road and see if um see if we can rev it a little bit more because this is this is definitely the most diesel only power we've had at uh, this engine um obviously no nitrous no methanol no that stuff going into it so we just need to see if on the road the temperatures are not getting too much and any of the pressures are giving any problems um but yeah, really, really happy with that. It's uh, it's not going to be slow on the road, definitely not. Whether it's a massive difference from what we had on the road test before, but I'm hoping this time we get the launch control on and actually do a decent 0 to 60 pull because it didn't really work last time. So we'll uh, we'll get it on the road again. We'll see what's what. But the limit that we're at now, we've not just stopped because we can't get any more power out of it. We wanted to test as it is now, see what the smoke output looks like on the road. Cause it's, it's one thing the dyno telling you it's doing 14 air fire, whatever it's doing. But if on the road you can see a bit of grey smoke or whatever and we're not happy with it, we're going to have to dial it back a bit. But also, we think, we, like I said, we're not too sure until we, we go out for a run with the, the gauge on again. But we think we're right at the limit of this uh, CP3 pump, which we've had more than this with nitrous, but whether we've actually delivered this amount of fuel from this setup before, I'm not too sure. So we'll, um, we'll get on the road, go for a run, see what's what, but really happy with that. I can't imagine there's many uh, faster diesel vans out there. 
few petrol ones that might have a bit more power, but definitely diesel wise, it's uh, it's going to be up there. So see what happens. We're back out in the caddy now. We uh, 385 horsepower this time, 386. So very happy. I'll uh, put a picture up of the driver's eye view what I've got going on at the minute. They've got a gauge here that's telling me what the coolant pressure is, and a gauge here telling me what the fuel lift pump pressure is. So that. Uh, it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. So we're back. I've got a laptop now. Should have been in there, but it's my fault for forgetting. But anyway, it is what it is. Go for a drive, see what's happening. So we're going to log. We're going to see what the coolant temps are doing. Obviously, we've got the coolant pressure. We've got the fuel pressure. We've got the lift pump pressure, so with the high pressure and the feed pressure. We've got the boost pressure, inlet air temperature. We've got the ejection duration to so make sure it's doing what it should be doing. Logging the exhaust manifold pressure, and then we're going to log the uh, fuel metering valve and the fuel regulator valve to make sure everything's behaving as it should. So there has been a few little changes on the gearbox side, so I think the sport shift point should be better to start off going. It seems to drive as expected. The gauges are really getting in the way, but that's the idea. I don't want to be having to look, look for them. It'd be nice not to be having to look through them, but see, uh, see how it goes. We'll not do anything too crazy until it's warm. the throttle a little bit, see, uh, see how it behaves on the log, and then to help James out, I'll try and put some markers in logs if I can, it's about like quarter throttle, it's about like half throttle now. Strange stuff going on when it's in uh, sport mode. Right, it's like the clutches are slipping a little bit between gears. I don't think that's the quickest way to to get a bar, so we'll have a look into that. Yeah, this is really it is quick. It's quick and it's clean and uh, easy to hit the rev limiter because it's just pulling so hard all the way to the top. So I think we. Uh, we definitely need to get this on track and uh, see what it's doing. So if Ruben gets out that way, that'll be the end of the video. That's that. Cheers. <laughs>